When creating a workflow, you can avoid creating duplicate workflows by using conditional logic within the steps to allow for the workflow to branch based off of different responses within the form. So we'll demonstrate this now. We'll go into our workflow list and we'll use the example as if we are let's say, working in our incident report workflow. We'll go ahead and edit that one. And maybe we have a slightly different incident report workflow um, depending on location. Uh, if we scroll down here, we can see in our workflow, we have two steps. We have an EHS review and then we have a root cause analysis. But maybe our EHS review process or responsible party differs based off of the location that the incident occurred. So rather than creating duplicate workflows, we will just make a conditional logic modification within this step. So we'll go ahead and open up the step, we'll edit it here, and go into our identify responsible party section. And here we have a responsible party, but, but again, this, this person is going to change based off of the location. So let's say we have Derek Brown here, but Derek Brown is only to be responsible when the form response is within the original submission. So we'll go ahead and choose that. And it's a condition within the original submission. So the original submission is that initial incident report form that was completed. So we'll go ahead and add a condition here. And that condition you can see populates this list with all of the different fields within that original form. So in the example that we're, we're talking about here, when the field office is, and we can pull the drop down menu of options within that form, or excuse me, field in the form to say, let's say, uh, when the incident is submitted for the Augusta field office, Derek Brown is to be the responsible party. So I guess that gives us one condition, but let's say it's a different office that it's reported from, we just need to add an additional assignment. So we can come down here and you can say we, down here at the bottom, it, it's asking for a fallback responsible party. So maybe there's another individual um, that it should fall back to in case Derek Brown is not available. Um, so we can go ahead and add another assignment here. So let's say that for another location, we have a different employee, let's say Carl Andrews, and he should be responsible when for that original submission form, Again, under our field office, let's say he is for our Blair location. So now we have two different conditions and we can keep going, adding as many assignments as we need to, to make sure we all have all of that conditional logic built in within this appropriate step. Um, so that when the form is filled out, depending on the location, it gets routed to the appropriate person. In building a workflow, if you're not sure who the responsible party should be for each step, you can make that responsible party variable. Uh, that person can be identified by the individual completing um, a previous step. So they can, they can select that responsible party on the fly. So let's demonstrate how to do that. So we'll go ahead and open up our workflow list. Um, let's go ahead and edit our, our incident report. Um, the workflow it has a couple of different steps in it. Here we have our EHS review and root cause analysis. Um, and let's say we're going to add a third step here, and um, we'll just say that this is a you know final sign off uh, step. We have three steps to the process, but maybe this final sign off is our variable individual, and um, you know it's, it's going to differ each time. And we want the person completing the root cause analysis. Um, maybe that's the EHS manager, safety director, um, and he or she should go ahead and determine who, who's going to do that final sign off of um, the incident details and um, the root cause analysis. So we'll go ahead and add our res identify responsible party, our second um, step here. And we will edit the assigned individual. So the employees are, and we'll edit that here and we'll set a particular condition. So the condition is that the employee who is responsible here um, is gonna be somebody related to the workflow, but this individual should be actually selected. So down here at the bottom, I scroll down to say selected by 
responsible party from step action EHS review. So that step action EHS review was the uh, one of the previous steps in the process. And I'm going to say that the um, that individual who completed the EHS review is the individual responsible to um, select who should be responsible for this task. Um, so we can go ahead and save that. Um, so now it says employees relation to workflow is selected by the responsible party in that previous step. And now we need to determine who that individual should be able to see or, or identify as the responsible party for this particular step. So should they only be able to select from employees that are visible to them based off of their role and permissions? Um, should they have all employees available for them to see? Or should they only be able to select from particular individuals? So you can go ahead and set that. Um, maybe just seeing the visible employees um, is most relevant. We can save that. And now we have a variable responsible party, which is selected on the fly from a previous step uh, responsible individual. Another option that you have within your workflow builder is the ability to set a responsible party that is based on an individual who has been selected within an employee related field in one of the forms um, that has been reported um, within that workflow um, um, uh, uh, tasks. So for instance, um, let's go ahead and open up our incident report form and scroll down. And we have a couple of steps here, our EHS review and our root cause analysis. But let's just say that the person responsible for doing the root cause analysis is maybe the, the, the supervisor from you know, whoever reported the incident in the first place. Um, so that's going to be a variable individual. We won't always know that. It's going to be variable based off of um, each individual submission. So we're going to go ahead and edit our root cause analysis step here and go into our responsible party. And here we, we've set this to be Derek Brown, but it's not always going to be Derek Brown in this particular use case. So we're going to go ahead and edit that and we will we'll remove Derek Brown. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and add a condition. So the responsible party is going to be conditional based on his or her relation to the workflow. So you can see that option there in the drop down. We'll go ahead and select that. And there's a lot of different um, options of, of how they might be related to the workflow. So um, in, in this case, we'll, we'll kind of scroll down here um, and you can see that there are all of these options that are labeled selected from. So the selected from option means they are an individual that was selected from a drop down menu field, like an employee related field um, in the original form. So let's say that um, here we want this person to do the root cause analysis to be the individual who was selected from the who reported the spill incident. So maybe this was an environmental related incident. And so the individual that was identified in that portion of the original form, that's going to be a responsible party to complete this particular task. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now we have that conditional individual um, and it can be, it will be routed based off of um, that original form submission. 